Hey everybody, Radamon here. Thanks for tuning in to Frost and Fire. So before I get started, I want to cover two game mechanics that I got a lot of comments about that confused people. So one is that Inspired Taming. So the Inspired Taming allows you to basically guarantee a successful tame, but it requires you to meet the minimum animal handling requirements. So if we take a look at Raptor here, he has an animal skill of three. If you take a look at a gorilla, it has a minimum handling skill. Well, I guess it won't say you here, but has a minimal, minimum handling skill of eight, which means that even if Raptor has an inspired taming, he would not be able to even attempt to tame a gorilla. That's just not how the game works. I got a lot of comments saying that I've forgotten about Raptor's inspiration. I did not. He would not have been able to tame the gorilla. The other question or comments that I've received a lot of is about the trade beacons. So the way the trade beacons work, let me explain in full. I will have to go into the development menu to show you. There is a type of raid called a center drop right up here, center drop. A center drop raid is a pod drop raid, which can target either directly your colonists or your trade beacons. The way this works is it targets the first installed trade beacon that is unroofed, regardless of whether it has power or not. Your trades that you trade for with orbital traders, the items that you trade will target your first unroofed beacon, whether it is powered or not. I think some of you already get the problem. The problem is if you would like to bait the raiders out to a bait beacon, that means that every single thing that you trade for also has to go out here. There is no alternative. So if you want to be protected from center drop raids, which land on your orbital trade beacon, it also means that you have to put your trades in the middle of nowhere. There is not an alternative. All right. Well, I hope I've fully explained those two game mechanics. Just to recap last episode, we had a brand spanking new mech cluster land right at the entrance of our lovely community. It will actually protect us from edge walk-in raids from Reapers. And uh, I guess to that end, it's kind of a good thing. And then we have this little mech cluster up here as well. Uh, there were some things that we might be able to do with this little mech cluster up top. Uh, so one would be to, and this was suggested by JD himself. JD is a patron of mine, uh, JD V2. He suggested that I funnel the raiders uh, into this mech cluster purposefully uh, by building a wall to funnel them. Now, the issue, of course, is uh, it is getting very, very, very cold, and it's going to be tough to build a wall, given the temperature, but I think it would be pretty funny and pretty useful. So, I will also slap a door in here as well. Uh, JD and, well, pretty much just JD would be able to build this, and I won't change the stay close zone. I'm just going to micromanage him. Another tip I received is from police. Police mentioned, wouldn't it make sense to not refuel my braziers until I do the Royal Ascent Ceremony? And you're absolutely right. I installed the braziers thinking that this was my only mech cluster and I would break it down. And then, of course, I got hit with a second one. One where I'm really not likely to want to attack it. I'm just going to wait for a Reaper to do the work for me. One other uh, confusing thing about uh, the ground penetrating scanner. So let me explain this one too. I forgot about this. So the way this works is two things. One, for a an area to be counted as enclosed, which means it can be heated, you need to have at least 75% of the area be roofed, which means that we have got a three by three or otherwise a nine square meter, let's call it uh, a nine tile radar scanner that when we scan needs to be unroofed, which means that the room it is in has to be at least 
a 36 size, right? It has to be four times that size. Uh, so I have 38 sized building here. This was just two tiles over the, the required size of the room. And this is because, as you can see here, building unable, uh, building unusable due to roof. You cannot use a ground penetrating scanner if it is roofed off and it matters, the entire roof matters, not just like one center roof, uh, which I will demonstrate here as well. Once my constructors are up. Well, another thing I definitely need to do, actually I'm going to do this game right now, is I want to haul this gorilla out before my crabs start nibbling pieces off of it. Uh, it's pretty rare to be offered meat in the mechanoid world that we live in, so when we're offered meat, I have to make sure not to waste it. So here, I will demonstrate that even removing one token roof doesn't matter. It is still unusable. It would need to be... Here, here's proof. It would need to be all nine tiles around it removed, and um, that's, that's just the way the game mechanics work. If you have a room that has uh, more than 25% of the room open to the sky, it is no longer an enclosed area and it will count as unroofed, like the whole area, which means that it won't be able to uh, be heated or cooled. It's just the way the game mechanics work. Now there's some coolers here that I can flick off because it's plenty cold outside. There's really no need for me to run my own coolers. Um, and we are just sort of uh, slag smelting and the like. So what I'm going to do here is wait for my slag uh, miners and processors to process a little bit more slag. And that would give me the steel required to build. I'm going to make sure to keep um, JD inside for a moment. So if I am to build this uh, border wall which I want to do. I have to be very, very careful to make sure that JD doesn't freeze in the process. Because it is... Oh, great. We just hit compacted steel. That'll help out a lot. Uh, it is very, very cold out, and we will become hypothermic very, very quickly. But JD himself suggested this project, so... I will happily comply. Now, I do have to micromanage him because he wants to go run into the mech cluster and, uh, well, k kill himself is what the net result of that would be. Um, so I think what we're going to do is just build small sections at a time and then force him inside. Make sure that he stays inside. And uh, that was weird. He just chose to eat in here and not on a table. While we are harvesting cloth, I have 132 cloth, we can continue to add uh, carpets in here, one little harvest at a time. It's going to take a while. It's going to take definitely a long time to be able to fully carpet up that room, but that's the eventual goal. This little warning notice about building unusable due to roof is going to get annoying, I think. I didn't really consider how annoying that would be. Alright, so JD, you've lost your hypothermia. Let's unrestrict you and have you set out. I think the best way to do this, honestly, would be to stockpile steel out here. I'll call it steel temp. So that he hauls an entire load of steel in one go. So let me change the, okay, this is just important. All 75. There we go. Because otherwise he's going to be hauling uh, something like 40 at a time and I'd rather do all 75 in one run. It also might mean that he needs to run back because of uh, hypothermia. Okay, there we go. Yeah, 
this might require a rescue. I'm going to have Gabe start to uh, try to meet him halfway. All right, how cold? It is... Yeah, all right, we're just going to have him run in. I had him out there for too long. All right, he did drop in the tunnel, and we have a raid of Reapers being scattered all over the place. Uh, so what's interesting about this is a lot of these Reapers... One is inside our walls, but a lot of these Reapers are going to immediately be shredded by the Mechanoids. So that's uh, good, I guess. And this Reaper, uh, Fujin, uh, is not. So if we take a look, Gort here is obviously going to immediately engage the Reapers as his role. Meathead up here, Fuse, Niner, Bubo, Bite and Naboo already fighting this cluster, uh, Talos and Hezrik. This type of raid is unusually clever, but they're not sappers. So they're going to go around and hit the gate entry and then Traforza in the south. This will be interesting. That's all I can say. Our JD is capable of walking. He, fortunately, I was lucky, did not lose any digits. He kept all his fingers and toes. As you can see here, Fujin actually decided to... Uh, go out of the walls We also have a gorilla here. Oh, and here's a perfect example uh, Here's a gorilla, right? Raptor despite having an inspired team Cannot tame animal skill too low need eight So yes, that's exactly what I was talking about just because you have an inspired team does not mean you can tame whatever you want Uh, unfortunately for me, I do have flammable walls, and these walls will burn up if not, um, fought, you know, firefighting. So I'm gonna get Raptor out here, who really does not have a wide temperature range where he is safe, but he is the only one available right now. There we go. Go juice. So this was more or less best case scenario for me. Where obviously this auto turret did not get destroyed. These uh, reapers failed. Uh, but best case scenario where um, the entire raid was dealt with by the mech cluster. And I didn't have to lift a finger. Which is sort of why I I left the mech clusters in place. Because it was sort of free defense. Um, now the question is, are these mechs going to commit to a full attack on me? Or are they going to turn around? I don't know the answer. They might keep coming. I think if that's the case, I'm going to have Gabe at the ready. Yeah, this... Uh, this Scyther does not look like he's about to turn around. I'm going to get Raptor out here as well. He still is a little hypothermic from... Uh, from putting out that fire. But I didn't want this border wall to go down. It was very important for it to stay up. Alright, so now that the... Scyther's down, we're going to turn off these turrets and game out... The uh, pikemen, it looks like it's going to be a full attack, which means that this mech cluster here is essentially toothless. Uh, just one little inferno turret is in no way a proper deterrent against uh, would-be attackers. I'm going to let them all get close. There it is, flip it on. And this is to maximize the amount of damage. Um, Raptor is rocking up a little bit of a uh, hypothermia. And he just got torso needle guns, so I'm going to have him back off anyway.
taking a look at the health of my turrets. None of them are particularly damaged. There goes two. JD, wake up, tend to Raptor with uh, actual meds because it was a bad torso wound. There goes three. Uh, Bash, I'm going to have you stay inside for now. This pikeman should be down any moment. Turning them all off to draw the last pikeman in because he's outside of the range of these turrets. But if the turrets are off, they're not valid targets and the pikeman will continue to push towards us. I'm going to stand here just to prevent uh, Gabe from becoming fully hypothermic. JD is going to go grab his weapon. This pikeman here is already pretty damaged. So that attack might make it possible for me to take out this both mech clusters, uh, given the temperature. I'm going to have to wait until winter's over because uh, we'll get hypothermic and die if I try to do it in the middle of the winter. Uh, but this mech cluster being only left with an inferno turret, turret and this one only left with a charge turret um, signals to me that uh, the mech clusters are definitely in a position where they're going to be easy to clear. Now that my turrets just fired off a whole lot of munitions, it's time to replenish my supply of uh, uh, steel. I think the best way to do this is to slap a door here and heat this corridor more fully. Uh, Bash, you can now stay close. I'll remind him that that's the case. I'm also going to need to... What is this? Uh, we're going to have to put the raw food of rice back on these shelves. Um, because the crabs aren't going to have a source of food to eat otherwise. And they eat a ridiculous amount of food. Like, they're... I know you all are for rice... Or, uh... <laughs> Rice. Uh, crab ranching. But they're hungry critters. I think they're very powerful. Which is why I'm happy to keep them. Especially in the summers where they're going to help me haul. But they are expensive. Okay, we're going to go shred these mechanoids that came to attack us. And they're still... Oh no, I guess the gorilla... Did it die? So we saw a Grillo pass the fight. I don't see a corpse of the Grillo, so I think it left the map tile. If I was to guess. Our psychic soothe is ended. We're going to train Cauterize to uh, attack and rescue. I hope he never has to rescue. But in the case that he does, a worst case scenario per, per se. Uh, I'd rather have him able to do it than not. Uranium tr slug turrets just got researched. Uh, next up will be biofuel refining so I can work towards transport pods. So with the uranium slug turrets, uh, once it is more temperate, I am going to lay out a proper kill box. One that uses both uranium slug and autocannon. Uh, both of these things I'm going to require some ground penetrating radar scans. I'm sort of curious if it's going to be possible to scan in the uh, in the winter, in the extreme winter here, if our heaters are going to be able to keep up with this ground penetrating scanner or not. Possibly not. But I won't know. So this area here, uh, here Gabe, you can deliver over here. This area here is um, nicely heated. Uh, I mean, it's cold, but it's not quite losing your fingers cold which is great and this added um this added node of steel is going to allow us to uh, uh pretty easily re rearm all of our turrets and and possibly make some additional statues these statues were small sculptures for trade uh talking about sculptures 
Your best bang for your buck if you're looking to improve a room is going to be large sculptures because they take up one spot, uh, but they're prettier than small sculptures. But bang for your buck if you're looking to sell for silver, small sculptures are the ideal. Just to, just to throw that out and make that clear. So we are in the dead of winter. It's a negative 113C, 114C. Uh, I would very much like to take out this turret, but I don't think it's a, a realistic goal for me to do uh, when we are in the middle of such cold weather. I think it would be dangerous and we could possibly collapse and have a uh, do more harm than good. Okay, so the crab allowed zone, I can allow them to move around like this. Uh, I don't need them to go outside anymore. We don't have corpses for them to eat. I'm gonna remove that zone and unroof it. It is 44 uh, C or 44 Fahrenheit like 7 C in there it's it's fine it's plenty warm so I've temporarily suspended this uh, wall here because it's not really needed given that this is only one auto charge turret with the single auto charge turret my best guess is I could probably rush the turret with bash and bash the turret to death with very little risk or even send all of them some shooters and bash to absorb the initial blast from the turret. There is still the uh, mini slugger, I guess, as well, but I think that's uh, that's of little concern. Now the other issue is that JD here. Uh, okay, wow, biofuel refinery. That was fast. I might want to get. Hmm. mortars the other issue is it's warm enough in this corridor to have it be a place where my characters seek uh fresh refuge from the cold which is to say not ideal because obviously it's not that warm and right now i'm just forcing bash and and, and jd inside so yeah, I don't want necessarily my hypothermic guys to treat uh, this cave area as like warm enough to, um, to you know, take cover from the cold. Because it isn't. It isn't that warm. Um, okay. Let's put them back on stay close. Now that they're not frozen, I have 27 cloth. So the other issue is, let me start to assess, I think I already assessed this, but start to assess clothing. So all of our pants are new. They're all Grillo leather. Uh, our shirts are falling apart. So we have a 54%. Uh, this one is fine because it's recent. A 59% and a 56%. Um, so all of our button-down shirts, but one, are in bad shape. Which means that I am definitely going to want to make button-down shirts with uh, really whatever whatever material I can get a hand, my hands on for the upcoming uh, summer. Or, or even for now, right? Because we're getting to the point where our shirts are going to be tattered and suffer a mood penalty. But those shirts still offer, even even the non-ideal ones, these still offer um, a few, you know, eight degrees Fahrenheit of cold insulation, which is not nothing, it's not phenomenal, but it does help out a little bit. So now we're really heating up this little area here with how I've uh, moved and changed the layout of uh, of the lights. And, and what I'm doing here is 
I'm trying to set this up so that, uh, oh, we are browning out. Sorry, Raptor. I'm gonna have to wake you up. I think, yeah, we are rocking minimum wind, which is really hurting in terms of our brownout. A research to be done, uh, like geothermal, would also be very, very handy. It, it's a longer research, it's 3200. Uh, and mortars are very, very helpful, especially now that we have biofuel refining. Uh, the thing about biofuel refinery is it cannot be reinstalled. Once you set it up, it doesn't go anywhere. So this might be a good thing to put into this room here. Um, you know, sort of out of the way. You know, same with a crematorium if we ever want a crematorium or something like that. I don't know if we're ever going to want one, but just a thought. Okay, so this node is coming to a close. Uh, I will continue the paths here. I'm trying to keep them illuminated to limit the chance of an infestation. Now, obviously, I don't need to have it illuminated in the winter for an infestation chance. It's just simply too cold. Except for except for this spot here. This spot is warm enough because of my two heaters. Quest expires. Simeon and the encampment. Yeah, I we obviously aren't going to be able to do this one. I'm just going to remove it. Uh, it's, we would freeze to death far before we ever got there. <laughs> by like years, right? Like we would show up and we'd just be dead. We would just be dead. Checking in on my turrets. They have all been just about perfectly reloaded. I'm not going to queue up any more art other than the current art that's uh, on the bench uh, because slug turrets and um, uh, the slug turrets that I'm going to be making and that kind of stuff are going to require a, a pretty decent amount of steel. So I might as well save up for it. Ooh, look at this. We are getting a new batch of beer going. And it's pretty safe to say that the amount of rice I have is sufficient in order to feed all of us simple meals and all of my pets. Galicia's Insects. Uh, an acolyte of the United Cities is having trouble landing near landfall due to repeated infestations. She wants to draw out the bugs to you to deal with. Uh, 19 hives, which is an absolute absurd amount of insects, but also 11 jacinaries placed under my control. Uh, I am a glutton for punishment. So I can, these jacinaries can die. I know exactly where the infestation is going to go. It has to go here. There's really no alternative. It has to go here because this is the only spot on the whole map valid for it. Uh, it does mean that I'm going to lose some heaters and a light and maybe a door or two. Um, but totally, totally okay with basically gaming the system Perfectly. So what I'm going to do real quick is to make chem fuel from organics and make it with vegetarian. I'm going to do this uh, immediately. All of these guys, let's get inside. They haven't all landed yet, but um, I want to make a Molotov. Uh, I don't actually know if I would be able to burn off um, the insects, but yes, it's... They spawned exactly where I thought they would. Uh, the, the insect hives that are outside here are going to die of hypothermia on their own. In fact, um, one way to deal with these insects, uh, which requires basically no effort on my part, is for me to just deconstruct these doors um, and have all the insects hypothermia die. So... Yeah, let's do the simple way of 
having them die of their own hypothermia. So I cut the cables here so that these heaters lose power. Uh, I'm not going to have JD break this door. It's simply too close. All of the bugs out here are obviously way exposed from, uh, you know, the the cold. They're, they're going to die on their own. And uh, yeah, we're just going to watch. We're just going to watch. Uh, one thing I could do to keep them a little bit more safe is the stay close zone. I'm going to remove my tunnels because obviously I don't want anyone going in the tunnels right now. It's just not safe. Um, another thing I might want to do with JD here is make it so that the bugs don't have a free path to get to me. Like walling them up where they're still exposed to the outdoor temperature. Um, right, it's still negative 175 here or whatever. Oh, you know what? There's this door. Ah, crud. I did not see that door. How cold? Oh, okay, JD's already too cold. Bash, you do this. I, I think the chem fuel that I made, I'm not going to be using because um, I don't think we're going to be able to burn these bugs. I think they're just going to get frozen from hypothermic shutdown. There's a lot of mouths to feed, so it's going to be really important for us to clear out this infestation, like, promptly. Because otherwise, uh, these guests, these 11 incinerators, are going to eat us out of house and home. Um, why is it so hot in there? I am not sure what... I guess these insects are, like, generating their own heat. Um, okay. Okay. I will, after all, make that Molotov, but not exactly for the purpose you all might think. Uh, so I do have just, literally just enough cloth to do it. I think these bugs are getting pissed because they're all getting knocked out from uh, hypothermia. And they're going to get aggressive, but they're never going to make it to me. They're going to die way before they ever make it. Uh, all of my guests here should be set to simple meals and uh, no drugs and no meds. I don't want to treat them well at all. Uh, these bugs, funny enough, are going to walk into the charge turret and get shot. All right, so JD, you are going to make Molotovs. I don't want you shred mechs right now. No, what are you doing? Okay. Um, don't shred mechs. Need material. Oh, boy. What material do I need? Cloth, chem fuel. 80 chem fuel. Okay, so you are, sorry, instead going to make some more refining. And you are going to stay close. All of my guys are going to stay close. So we're gonna we're gonna get enough chem fuel for Molotovs so that I can burn this door unless they break it themselves. They might actually break it themselves, but it is always helpful to have Molotovs on hand just in case. Every single bug out here is unconscious. Uh, there is a ton of insect meat that I could very easily feed my crabs if I obtained. Uh, the trick is, of course, the crabs are or the uh, mega spiders are like it's so cold that you know. I won't be able to get to them, but that's the goal. And here's an acolyte ceremony. All right, one more refining. So we're just trying to find enough chem fuel to make Molotovs to burn this door so that this insect hive, which is being uh, the insect hive itself is generating heat, is then exposed to the absolute frozen cold. So, the chem fuel is done. Uh, JD, I'm going to wake you up in the middle of the night. I apologize. So that you make those Molotovs. Because it's the longer that we take here, uh, the more these guests are going to have mood breaks and be generally just a problem for me. Unless, of course, the insects uh, mine out their own hole by themselves. I mean, they might. They might. 
Okay, so here comes the Molotovs. My, oh, my guess should... Another thing I need to do is to set the guess not to do anything else. I don't really want them, um, oops, I don't want them working at all. I don't trust them as cooks or as anything. Alright, Gabe, I'm going to have you equip these Molotovs. I think you're the most insulated. And... Fire in the hole. So now, uh... They are, instead of being hypothermic, they are going to heat stroke out, and a sizable amount of them are going to set on fire. Kind of a kind of a funny mix, frost and fire mix, if you will. Uh, it does mean that there's going to be plenty of bugs spilling out of this corridor here. Uh, you know, what? I'm going to leave them all at the ready. I'm not going to conscript any of them yet. I just want them ready to react. This also means uh, adding this door. I think it's our probably already home zoned. Yeah, adding this door to the home zone. Um, removing all this from, uh, you know, fire or whatever. Uh, so that uh, JD can repair it and prevent them from uh, escaping. In fact, I will go so far as to say I'm going to build a wall here. So they don't get to get out. Now all of the cables, and this is this is why I designed the tunnels like this. Uh, originally there was going to be more compartmentalization with the doors, but as you can see the the chamber here is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This one is 300 because of the door. The door is acting as a, a slight insulator. Uh, I think what I'll do is this. So Gabe, deliver the steel for the steel wall. I really want to box them in. All these guys are basically done for. They're all unconscious, and I just need to finish them off with, like, a bolty. Okay, Gabe. Uh, JD, you got to go to cover. You're getting too cold. So most of these bugs are minor heat stroke. It is doing a whole lot of damage to uh, my cave system, but nothing that is not repairable. And then fortunately, the fire did ex exactly what I wanted it to do. It spread into um, their chamber, their main chamber, and it's lighting all their jellies and hives on fire as a source of fuel. All right, Bash, it's time for you to wake up. Uh, and this this wall section is going to be the most important because it's about to get bashed through. They're already heat stroke serious. Okay, we got there just in time. Yep, as you can see, the glowing indicates that it's like superheated. Uh, these bugs are already so heat stroked, they're just not going to be able to react to be able to continue bashing their way out. And they're all unconscious. What is your deal? Oh, you're jealous of a... You don't even live here. Get out of here, you jealous dude. Uh, obviously, my simple meal supply is, uh, well, it's terrible. It is terrible. So I'm going to wait until all these um, bugs basically die of hyperthermia, of heat stroke, before uh, clearing out the cave. 
It's unfortunate that we lost some lights and cables or whatever, and we have a lot of cleanup to do, but hey, that was an easy one. That was an easy one. I knew exactly where they were going to spawn, and uh, I counted them phenomenally, I feel. So, at this point, uh, Bash. Or JD, how... Okay, I'm going to have him wake up. So, JD is going to... Um, to open this up, because all the bugs are now dead. And I want to salvage as much of the bug meat as possible. Which means uh, fighting fires and trying to put the bugs out. Now, uh, great, an assaulting spree. All of my guests are going to go a bit nutty in a minute. Uh, so stay close. Um, because they, their accommodations suck. So it's, you know, I'm fighting the clock of their, of my guests. And then, of course, this cave is now super frigid. Uh, and JD and Gabe need to go somewhere warm immediately. These these guys are probably very hungry, too. Oh, no, they're not hungry yet. But they will be. Yeah, Gabe's getting a high, uh, frostbite. Okay, they're inside in time, though. Um... Let's continue fighting fires. Okay. So at this point, what we need to do is to finish off the bugs that are out here. Um, in order to do that, I'm probably going to need to put the power cables back in. And then... Put a bunch of heaters in here. Or no, um put some heaters in here to keep this corridor warm so that we can hunt the bugs and then come where it's warm. Oh, Bash is having none of this guest. Oh, great. A murderous rage guest. Um, all of you... Well, Gabe, don't worry about it. All of you, punch him. Oh, okay. Your murderous rage... See, I can't hurt him. All right, whatever. I guess you get to murder whoever you want to murder. Um, I'm not really responsible for your welfare, so good luck. Bash just got bashed, so another issue I'm going to have is... Um, yeah, he's already super hypothermic. Get inside! I'm going to feed, uh, yep, we're going to get dark here. I'm going to feed this dead person to the crabs. He also dropped a charge lance. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Kill each other. See what I care. It's an unbound charge lance. Uh, the stay inside zone, I'm going to remove from this door. So that uh, these guys, well, they are just not abiding. But okay, they are no longer going to see the corpse of their fallen comrade. Now, what are you doing? You are digging. No, don't continue digging. I want to build this cabling. Now, this hive is... These hives out here are still spawning. Uh, wow, we got so hypothermic so quickly. So they're still spawning, uh, which means I'm going to need to clear them out quickly. Uh, this will take a lot of effort. But I think we're getting to the point where I'm just about running out of time and we'll be picking this up another episode. So we've got nine hives out there, and I have a plan to clear them. Well, guys, that is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the absolute nutty chaos. We're very close to being able to clear out all the infestations and then netting the honor and Eltex skullcap rewards. 
And then after that, maybe clearing the remaining mech clusters and granting Raptor his royal titles. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you next episode. Farewell, everybody.